definitely but with only one band left, either the so the Graves or, or the, the Maokai. Maokai then. Graves or Maokai get through. One of one of the two. What's the choice here for T1? Sejuani as well with the melee solo laners pretty strong. And you're in a position where you can choose to ban one, leave the others up and available, or ban nothing, leave the pool wide open. Instead, opting to ban the Fiora. Respect to Flandra. Again, not a champion I expected to see him play. Busted it out twice today already. Are they willing to do carry jungle? Every jungler has been googly eyes over graves here since the buffs. Such a powerhouse. Oh, wow. I think this is why T1 elected to leave both Maokai and Sejuani up so that, okay, you get the Sejuani, we can get the, you know, Graves plus Sejuani back on the other side. Play it into the Maokai front line and see what the option is going to be here. Now remember, Last time these teams played, it was it was Viper who got his hands on the Callista. The expectation was that EDG bot lane would run away with it, but Guma 5-0 and 12 the last time they met. Yeah. This time around, Guma putting it to the test, just wants to show that he's better across the board, both on the scaling and on the early game champions. Will get the Callista for himself. Now it feels pretty mandatory that they take at least one of the remaining power picks, but perhaps they've got something else up their sleeve on the side of T1. Yeah, just trade it. Give the Maokai, get Sejuani as consolation. They've been very, very, very happy with this champ. Flexing it, no problem. Now EDG gets to debate. They can obviously match AD. See if there are any other champions they want to bring the board. We've got flex picks on either side of the Sejuani and the Maokai. So a bit of uncertainty for both teams being sowed as we get ready for the second ban phase. Zayas hasn't played a top since their since their games versus Sandbox a while ago as well, but it definitely could still be Flex here. And they're gonna go with the Ophelios into the Kalissa. This has been one of the popular picks. See if they grab uh, the Renata as well. You're already expecting that engage charging right at you or the safety Dead. of Mako's Thresh. And Mako's I like Thresh it. Thresh today, three for three. Mako back on the Thresh. Let's see that play. And it's so guaranteed with the Maokai W setups. And the thing is, you highlighted it already. We've already seen this exact play from the side of EDG where you just go mid with these two champions and there is nothing you can do against the point and click CC of Maokai into the follow-up. But I also just love seeing Mako on Playmakers. The second Yumi is off the board and we get to see Playmaker on Playker, Playmaker. Emily talked about on the desk, Karia and Mako, two of the best Playmaking supports in the world, no doubt in my mind. Now get to see them both unleashed on the Rift as mid lane being targeted, Baker opting to grab the victor himself and now trim away some of the other champions in the mid lane pool. Yeah, whittle down on some of these assassin picks here for Scout. His Akali today was really clean, instant ban there. Meanwhile, for EDG, gotta look at this support role, the pairings with Kalista. What can we take off the board? We take out the Renata. We were able to pick up the Thresh ourselves. What else do they want to opt for? Are they concerned about the Nautilus? Obviously, we're able to outplay Fnatic, but still a conventional counter pick, and certainly stronger when empowered by a Kalista. Viego now also going to hit the bench. Makes sense, as the Maokai remains a flex. Kobe, I don't know about you, but I'm feeling the pressure, man. I feel like one, I, one I wrong think... step, one crazy pick could change yeah. this entire draft. I mean, if you ban either the Nautilus, then, then they could just go uh, more engaged like Leona or something like that, too. Would be the go-to. Oh, they're pike. still worried about the pike. Carry a pike. I mean, it is scary. Certainly shakes the game up. Oh, please. Carry a one of the deepest champion pools for supports. And he's playing with the hearts of the viewers at home as well as the audience here in New York. Nautilus is the conventional choice. The point and click is just so good versus that Aphelios. But the bard. <laughs> Soraka. The Soraka comes back. Very aggressive harassment in the early stages here. So good against Thresh, too, because when you sell through yourself going for a death sentence, boom, Soraka nails you with both spells. And difficult to now because and EDG. Graves, finally. If EDG lock in this Graves, their composition excellent at fighting front to back, but they don't really have a backline diver without a flank to get on top of the Soraka, and that's going to make this tanky front line in the form of Zwani so much better. But you want a diver. There it is, Lissandra. Graves duo. The kill pressure onto Faker in this game will be immense. Some of the best EDG games have been when they have these enabling mid lane champions roaming around, creating plays. Lissandra, huge, huge possibilities here for Scout. If he can get out of lane versus Faker. And even setting up towards mid lane, you think about top lane roaming down, Maokai W roots with Lissandra CC or Thresh roams around the map. And they pick up Zeus with the 
with the Gangplank here for the ultimate towards bottom side. They really have an aggressive bottom side now. Gangplank ultimate plus the Callista Soraka. T1 can focus on trying to stack some Drakes down there, open up some early cooldowns. And I really love this because you've built a composition and you're against EG who want to fight into you. But GP and Victor are two champions who are hard to fight into. Callista, of course, traditionally outscaled by a lot of these options. GP, that's not the case. One incredible barrel, one good Victor ult. We go late enough in the game, more than enough to turn the tides in their favor. Opposite side for EDG, I'm looking at Lissandra, I'm looking at the setup. Uh, Gangplank also really good versus Lissandra too. So, see if, I really do like the, the T1 side of it on this red side draft. We'll see though, EDG have a lot of playmaking ability. Maokai, Lissandra, Threat. T1 versus EDG to end the group. Just think about it, this could, this could easily be a world final in any year. It's been an MSI <laughs> final. And again, the crowd hungry for action here and you can't blame them. We might get a bit of silence, we might get a bit of quiet on the first few levels, at least in the game. Oh, and we got the control ward start here for JJ again. Control ward start for the Graves. See, Faker, first strike, no cleanse. Level six comes around, the gank, the setup, the path is clear for the side of EDG if they want to make those plays happen, as you highlighted earlier. Zeus with the oranges, so easy for him to mitigate a lot of that dive threat, a lot of that gank threat. And I think the bot lane naturally is kind of where I look towards. As explosive as the solo lanes have been, I feel like the GP versus the Maokai, it's not going to be our source of action. Mid lane level six, but we know how important the early levels are. Carry and Guma stepping forward. Hope not going to connect on the Mako. Has taken death sentence level one. Yep. Checking in. I mean, it's slow, it's quiet, it's a little bit of tension owner. It's going to get a bit of an early leash. Which does mean that Flandre gets first access to the wave on the top side, bot side. Neither team opted to go for the leash here. Not surprised to see JJ play away from the bot lane on the first clear as he could try to make a play in the mid lane or top lane with the setup CC present. Credit the Viper for stepping forward. Level 2 starts to get a little bit harder as the Soraka has more harass tools. Yeah, a huge part of the early push on this lane goes with hitting those Soraka Qs. Pretty good movement so far from the EDG duo. Dodging most of them, but the early push, of course, still acquired. Gumiushi and Karia are going to slowly move it in. Sejuani moving down, too, with a red Raptor uh, clear into blue quadrant. They have the pre-existing ward over bottom Scuttle Crab. Push already acquired, so T1 securing complete control of the bottom side of the map. And it's the little things. Faker getting the early push in the mid lane, laying down that vision, keeping an eye on where the Graves will be, helping track some of the early kill pressure that is present on the side of this EGG, EDG composition. T1 sustaining pressure on the bottom side. They could build a big wave and look for a dive. If they call owner over, they could they could definitely burn some cooldowns at the very least here versus Mako Viper. Yeah, big old wave stacked up. Call over jungle. Here comes Spotted. owner. First play of the game. Good heads up board. They at least are going to know that it's coming. Make up the flay, the death sentence. Krug trade, maybe. Room down, play his own. He left his own Krugs up, so you expect JJ to also path up there, take top crab, look for his Krug steal as well. Big thing here is T1 just gonna walk up, auto the tower, hit the plates, poke and harass, because Mako and Viper cannot step forward as long as they're not certain where owner is. They spot him now, they know that he's taken the Krugs, but the pressure on the bot side is already netted in a jungle advantage for owner. JJ now gonna try to respond yep. on the top side and steal away Krugs from the opposition. Yep, he knows. Sejuani easily back into the river, pick up Scuttle Crab. Go collect Raptors before you get your recall off. And they should end up even. Zeus okay with having the Graves up there. And I'm just waiting. <laughs> See where these junglers go. The stage of the game, pretty calm, pretty collected from both sides. Top lane actually pushing a little bit for Zeus here, so could get a little dicey with Graves behind him. He's got his wave in front. Got the oranges, locked up, immediately uses the oranges. JJ on the way up, big slow coming in from the smoke screen. Locking that one, Zeus now needs to walk away. Second half of the queue, not gonna connect. That's big, Zeus walks out alive. Doesn't burn any sums. Yeah, a bunch of damage on those minions too, so minions taking some splash there. He doesn't have to worry about anything getting frozen on the other side of the map. Gets his recall off. Zeus holds his flash, doesn't panic. Yeah, credit to him. Of course, small goal lead for Flandre for now is the wave. This is just a little bit from Zeus, TP as well, advantage, but you match the Maokai will be forced to come back to lane. Faker just trying to cancel the back here, threatening Scout. 
Good hook. But no real follow-up there on the bottom side. Carry and Gumiyushi so hard to bully out of lane. They have so much sustain. You can tell the tension here in the crowd to top the group. As soon as one skill lands, teetering on an edge. And of course, when you don't know where the junglers are, that is the kind of pressure that you're under. A single piece of CC hits and there is the follow-up. Fall down very quickly. And again, small advantages for either side could mean a lot as we move forward. Five minutes in, Harold still three minutes out. CFT1 can use this opportunity. Getting uh, some canceled recalls here for Viper and Mako. They're very low, they have no more sustain left. No more potions for Viper. 50% health there on the, uh, on the Aphelios. And the wave getting pushed in once again. It's an early move for T1. They, they decide not to recall and go for the plate money. Ooh, one auto there, getting it dangerously close. But you can see the longer they keep Viper in this lane without backing, the bigger the CS lead feels like it's going to get. Again, you highlighted already, running out of mana, running out of health. Finally, at least Mako will get it back. You've got JJ in the area covering. Making sure that the no dive can come through. I wonder if Mako goes mid with his recall then. Boots purchase for him. Could try and get some mid uh, vision set up. You are now hitting level six on the mid laners. This six minute mark is where you can have really big mid lane plays. Lissandra with the ultimate. But they're not even gonna clear out one of these gank paths. Control ward exists around mid to the top side. And we have an owner move towards top side while JJ moves towards bottom. JJ coming down. Mako, is he going to commit the flash? Slow already coming out. Guma just forced to flash because he's not certain. He can't see where the hook is going to come from, so just flashes early in response. Exactly. The smoke screen, such good gank setup just itself. So very efficient move there for JJ. Clears out the control ward in the river as well, trying to establish control here for the route to gank through mid and bottom. And you can see immediately how far back Faker is playing, because he knows now that Six is here, now that he doesn't have a cleanse or opted not to take a cleanse. The pressure is on. They're still going to commit to it anyway. Flashing out, but Mako, he's there with the hook, the lantern, the follow-up. It is textbook focus around mid lane. Faker going to try to walk it off, but the ignite is there. Yeah, a false sense of confidence. You see the jungler walk across your whole lane. JJ plays his part perfectly. Look, you don't have to worry about a gank. You know, I cleared the ward. It's free. He goes up to the top side, but he forgot about Mako. Mako Thresh. All day today. Three for three in games. He does not miss. Scout sets it up. The flash play with Asandra. Now they're roaming towards the top side too. This G. pressure could cascade. Not done yet. Flandra low, but it might not matter. All coming down from the GP. Zeus caught off to the side. Scout ready to go over the wall. Locking him down. Zeus flashing out to safety. Getting away from the Ring of Frost. That's going to be big because owner is on the way up. But you have to be careful not to overextend. Flandra so incredibly low. Excellent response from the side of T1. They get the flash from the GP, but they will not take his life. That play is why clearing out this vision between mid and bot is so critical. That gank pathway, both for jungler, but also for support. Mako Thresh, making it happen again there for EDG. And the first blood money goes right onto Scout, two stacks onto the Dark Seal. So Faker, tele teleport had already been used. He walks back very quickly though, gets a turret plate in answer for the attempt at Zeus' life. Yeah, these early item buys, especially if Scout is going to offer the Everfrost, are just so incredibly critical for team fighting. Offering more utility, more burst damage for Lissandra as well, making the resets easier. Is they could have taken the bad end of a trade there. Guma and Carry is still playing very far forward, but XP advantage in favor of EDG for now. They reestablish Control Ward presence in the river here for T1. Immediately, Owner goes in for the red buff contest. Leashing it himself. Sejuani doesn't do it very quickly, but JJ will stop at Raptors, so that's going to give him enough time. He's got Smite, no problem. It is secure. Level 6 Sejuani, fully operational. And you can tell how close this game is and how much it means to both teams because neither side is risking overly aggressive moves to try to force Drake. Recall timers are being used for buys, for landing advantages. Neither side able to match a significant enough lead that they're able to take one of these big objectives across the map quite yet. And you can see there, Scout, he then takes the couple seconds from mid lane, push out, then move into the river, clears that control ward immediately. As Soon as JJ says, hey, he took my red, he must have put it down another control ward. Go clear that thing out. That is our play, our path to playmaking here. Scout, though, Waiting has stealth ult. Just spotted him. Can buy time with it. Not too threatening from a damage perspective, but they will not overcommit. He's looking juicy, though. Owner wants it. 
waiting, hoping that he burns the E. Owner can't afford to miss. Sorok on the way up. They're going to commit to the play. Scout locked down. Go buys himself a brief moment. The gravity field's already there. The silence from the Soraka is key. Carrier coming in just in time. Patience pays off, and it's right at the rift rail. And EG, EDG going to start it out regardless of Scout going down. And T1 are just going to roam everybody to the bottom side. Look at the turret plates already being mined by Guma Yushi. They kept Guma on bottom side. EDG make the call. Full rotation up. And it's so critical. The T1 are able to grab not only plates in the bottom lane, but plates in the mid lane, because if it's just the Herald, the local gold, pushing that trade very much in favor of ADG, but Viper, perfect guns to take a tower. As I say that, he swaps away. Can just drop the Herald on the top side, but T1 fighting fire with fire, responding with the player of their own. 1k gold lead for now. GP ult, just to clear the wave. The dive coming through on his A. There's no way he makes it out of this one. Soraka heal will not be a knife. Viper flashing out to safety, though, and carry it here to stop the push from amounting to anything else. Soraka by herself, not too scary though. Faker's teleport is not even quite up yet, so Faker could not even teleport to tower. A couple more seconds on it. Maybe when the cooldown comes up. Herald. Can the Herald charge before the teleport cooldown is up? I think they're gonna blow it up, yeah. Trying to get it down. That thing is gone. Two and a half play, it's gonna shred through it. EDG grabbing first tower of the game, now finding themselves the gold lead. Good heads up use of the Herald. Scout already covering the bottom side to stop Guma for pushing for anything else. Ooh, one more. One pistol shot. Ooh. <laughs> Doesn't mean much yet, but might mean an extra easy 600 gold later in the game. Shelly's a hard worker. Gonna see that job done. All the way into the secondary turret. Definitely could mean something later on, but not extreme split pushing on the side of EDG, of course. They're looking for the quick push and roam strategy. Try and make use of that crowd control setup. Baker, meanwhile, moving down to find Scout again. Scout now has Flash, though, in addition to his ult. So. Baker moving with so much confidence because he has Ludens. Massive item advantage. He can just zone Scout out of this lane, force him out by trading aggressively. And as long as there's not a jungler in the area, heavily favored for him. It's just going to back off there as Mako tries to regain control of the bottom side. Of course, important to note the Graves obviously packs a punch in terms of damage, but Umbral Glaive is just such an overall powerful item when it comes to these fights over Vision. Yeah, especially when you always combine it with the Zombie Ward as a jungler. It just proliferates the Vision across the map, and he's going bottom side looking for Faker. Scout with the setup and again. looking to lock him up. Gravity Field going to lock down JJ for a brief moment. Scout now forced to back away. JJ now on the chase. That's the challenging smite laid down. One, two shots coming in from the shotgun. Owner not going to connect on the other big, but JJ whiffs. Oh, the movement from Faker. But no! One bullet! The fade away with the lantern from Mako. It is beautiful to watch. Oh! Baker, the hubris there. He wanted the money. But JJ, he moves right in front of the Sejuani. Owner could not block the shots. He gets the kill and gets out on Mako's lantern. This Thresh is such an enabler. And that is an absolute moment where the tiniest mechanical differences matter. The box laid down, the lantern there, but Viper not quite close enough to follow up. Women carry is saying focused, but the gold Still so close. 400 difference between these two teams. There's a Drake for the side of T1, but there's a tower for EDG. Oh my goodness. All right, I'm pretty sure JJ misses the Q damage too. So yeah, Scout it gets flashes with the ult. JJ doesn't get the Q damage or the R damage. He's also going to get juked on the R. But as long as he E's the stun, Faker comes back in. And JJ just moves across the oh. Zekwani. Gets the auto there. You got to have a body blocker. At this moment, he knew he made a mistake. But and then the Mako Lantern there as well. <laughs> <laughs> and the thing I love about that is even in a serious game, even when the stakes are high, both make, uh, Faker grinning, <laughs> JJ grinning, they both know what, what happened there. Yeah. You, you miss, just gotta respect it. You missed the Q, you missed the R, but you hit the I. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta play it flawless. That's the pressure when the gang comes through. Viper and Mako reestablishing control of the mid lane. Only going to get harder for Flandre to sit in lane up against Zeus. Is the Triforce already completed? It looks like Collector on the way. Obviously very powerful with the GP ult. And Kobe. This game is delicious. Thus far, it has been exactly what we wanted. It is no longer one team out drafting or styling on the other. It is neck and neck. It is toe-to-toe -to -toe fist fight across every single lane. 
And it's gonna be very interesting to watch. Oh, Zeus! He's in the barrels! The cats come out! But they're he, just a parting he present. down the whole forest there, Daniel! Oh my goodness! He's full of health too! Faker on the other side though, again. JJ back for round two. Owner's waiting for him. JJ, now gonna be in trouble. Only two stacks though. The entire team now backing off because they know they don't need to fight. They don't need to force for anything else. Already on the top side, Zeus has done so much to build an individual advantage. 40 CS lead, taking a tower. The GP is massive. Yeah, Trinity Force and Serrated Dirk Spike here. While Flandre's still working on Mythic, he made the stop off to get the tier for the mana. And Zeus co finishes Collector at 15 minutes. Trinity Force Collector done here for Zeus after that. Level 11 as well. Yep. Rank 2 Ultimate next yep. time. Okay, let's take, take a look back look. at this one. Honestly, this is so quick. Oh, so Flandre W'd, but it's a little late. He still took the barrel damage. He was Ooh. trying to dodge the barrel damage with the Ooh. W, but it's a little late there. And Zeus just pops him. The cats just give him a warm hug on the way out. <laughs> He's having a great time getting everything he wants in the exchange. And T1 now setting up around the objective. And remember, was Zeus this far ahead with Faker at level 11? EDG fighting oh, into this is so hard, but Scout on the side. Maybe he can get something done. They're moving into the choke. This could be big for the side, but the silence! Countered and picks and bans. There are no buttons for Scout to push. It's too easy for Caria. Puts the silence field right down on that claw, but a scout takes it and instantly blown up. And he couldn't help it. Five members there. Would have been a five member snare. Macaria knows it's the best option. Another, Another lamp! Oh man! Take this champion away! The silences are too clean from Caria. T1 pulling ahead, 2k gold lead. Sights set on that mid lane tier one. Caria with the bar trumpet as well. He just says no, EDG. Two wards down on that lantern. Silence Field again. Both EDG carries. Both EDG carries countered instantly by Caria. So He's also rushed the Mikhails to get every member, <gasps> any member of T1 who gets out, he can counter there as well. Oh. T1 already has built all the answers. The silence field was down so early too. No reason for Scout to take that. No reason at all for him to take that. And maybe doesn't quite see the animation in the moment. There are so many champions there, but here, there's nothing you can do. Not only do they drop the silence, not only do they get the snare, they drop two wards right on top of that. Two lantern. wards and a big old Poro Rider. I gotta say, Sejuani looking like the champ of the day. <laughs> Certainly is. My goodness, though, this this EDG comp, it, it relies so mid, so much on picking people off on side lanes here. The Maokai, Lissandra, Thresh that we went over. But T1, not only do they have the Gangplank, they also now have the Mikhails to get anyone else out. A Soraka heal as well for anyone who gets picked. They have so many answers built to the engage of EDG. And I just... I feel like this EDG composition so often fu functions like a shotgun. You got one shot, you gotta hit it. Scout needs these multi-man ultimates, JJ needs these multi-man ultimates. But the Soraka is just a cork in the tip of that shotgun. It is not going well. Snare gonna hit three though, that's big. That could potentially be the start of the fight that they need. Faker trying to zone the rest of the team away, but Scout's already on the back line. He's managed to lock down one. Maybe this is the follow. Viper on the back side, not able to get in though. That's gonna be key. Two and a half seconds from the Zanyas. Zeus! Not enough, Zeus leaping in. It's a pyro with a gun versus all of EDG. Triple for Zeus, dominating the fight. Karius said, we are the boss of Group A. T1 going to emphatically put their stamp on the day. A, it is a clean ace. Zeus taking heads here. Collected, collected, collected. Man, nah, he's going to have 10K at the end of this tower. That is a rich pirate before 20 minutes of four one-in-one gangplank. 10,000 gold look, look, already. Eh, you talked about a loop pinata. And we got one more on and the rim. look rift. at the sectioning on this team fight here. Zeus this whole time just moves up and creates another front while the rest of them go for the other side and are all focusing on Faker. Scout has the Zonios early, the rest of the group, but Zeus, boom, there's one, collects him. Boom, he's got another. Passive proc on Viper already. Another shot. 
even as the Lantern is coming out to save him, they still connect it on the exit. And it's big because they have so much zone control. If the initial combo does not work, it does not take someone out immediately to get the Lissandra reset. You can see the smiles, the elation on the faces of T1 and their staff, because they know how easy it is it is for them to execute these fights, how well they have been playing to shut down all of EDG's options. 3K from the GP, just about 4K from Baker. Monster performances from these solo laners. Yeah, Karyo with that very quick Mikhail's onto Faker as soon as the Maokai gauge went off. And Faker unleashes the full combo there. Storm up super early. T1 absolutely smashing. And now it's a 6K gold lead, Kobe. 20 minutes. So hard now for EDG to fight back. Again, if they can pick off single members, they've still got a chance, but need to keep their eyes on Carrier, really. If they take that silence out of the equation, maybe they can get a little bit more done, but if it's not the silence, it's the gravity field. Of course, there is a Herald in favor of EDG. They will finally use it in the mid lane, really trying to force this exchange. Trellia's used a lot in the back of that Herald. A lot of spears stacking up. They won't be able to stop the charge, but they can stop the follow-up push. Seus on the side. Again, one big, one very angry pirate. Looking to make his way out of this group. Baker already taking down one. Flunder off to the side down. Viper in no man's land. Five members chasing him down. He's got all the chakrams in the world, but he ain't got any teammates. He's getting knocked down, and T1 setting their sights on the Baron. Baker has always exited groups in first place, and today looks like it will be no different. JJ going to try and slip in here for an objective bounty off of this dragon, but the teleport comes through. Double teleport. Oh, T1 ready to fight for everything. Carry off to the side. The silence on the scout. Zeus in the midst of everything. Do they have enough damage to burst oh him down? He's dominating. He's huge. The Soraka keeping him healthy. They can't kill him. Maybe, just maybe, but no, they don't have the damage. He's surviving everything. Carry out the hero to stop the shutdown. The hero to keep Zeus alive. And there's nothing else we can say. New York is saying it for us. Tight, close game. First 15 minutes. It takes one fight. Absolute confidence and execution from the side of T1. They are dominating EDG. So, so clean. Started out, owner with the ultimate here, over onto JJ. They try and deal with the Maokai ult, but look at this. It's Zeus with the Chaos Storm. Faker and Zeus run the entire team away from Viper. The two T1 carries run them off, and then Viper's got no team left. He's been run into the pit by himself. T1 with Baron buff now. Oh, Flandre running. No, Mako can't even speed him out to safety. T1, they're just, they're so far ahead now. The execution's already been fantastic, but now the gold lead feels nigh insurmountable. Ophelio's farming what he can in the mid lane, but he has to get out quickly. The rest of T1 ready to collapse at a moment's notice. He does not have the luxury of a Thresh Lantern there. He has to retreat up back into his own jungle just to survive Viper. Fishing for a 1v1 against the support, but he can't finish the job. And now, well, we know who can. It's going to be Zeus. Gale force out. Viper just barely able to escape. My goodness, the, these T1 carries, the combination of Faker, the Go, and Zeus, one of the most exciting players in the entire world right now. Lock up, JJ, just barely able to make it out. You know, Zeus got a Thunder, Zeus got a GP. Everyone's <laughs> got their thing. Ooh, the entire map in T1 control. The whole thing is red. There is. There are only specks of EDG blue to hide behind at this <laughs> it's moment. 13k gold on the GP, Gobi. It's... Infinity <laughs> Edge is <laughs> on the way. You're not supposed to see leads this big in a pro game, Kobe. It's an it's, incredible performance. It's almost four items to one up here in the top lane matchup. Yep. That is a brutal. Ooh. And to be fair to Flandre, I think he should probably stop taking farm and give it to the carries, but... It's just so hard. Viper just hitting two items. Guma already at three. Faker on the way to three. Has the Lich Bane, too, just for the extra close combat dueling. Doesn't need the death cap. EDG have to hold the line if they want first seed. Hook gonna connect on the Viper, or Guma Yushi. That could be the start of something. Faker getting zoned away, but they burned all their cooldowns, and they have yet to find a kill. The re-engage now coming in. The lockdown from over the wall. Seiyu's still standing strong. Keep your eyes on the barrels. Where are they gonna go? If they can find one kill, maybe it'll be enough. Faker getting cut down. Faker, can he stand strong? The shutdown, the reset from Lissandra. One ghost, not gonna be enough. T1 too far ahead, but they're finding one at least. They're slowing T1 down, but still, they push forward. The hook going wide. Owner going in. That's his Q. That is his signal. The GP. Raining hell from above. Owner, Mako! 
taking the kill. Soraka's OP, but not that OP. Can't keep Sent <laughs> alive under the tower there. Last one does take it down a little bit of hope for EDG, a little bit of a spark, two kills for themselves. Getting a shutdown there onto Faker. Now is the time to rally. You hear the fans trying to start it up. Looking for that comeback. 10,000 gold down, three dragons down, but a hope alive. Jio, fuel, they need it. Fuel for the fire. That takes time. That's all EDG need. That's the hope that they're buying themselves. A few more minutes to farm to get stronger, but despite the lead T1 built, EDG still managed to make some things happen. Yeah, they engage on both sides. Flandre flashes on Faker while um, Guma gets hit with the Mako death sentence there. But then Zeus comes to push him out. They re-engage onto Faker right out in the open. Scout uses the offensive ult so they can get the shutdown. It ends up going to Maokai. Not the best recipient, but they're glad to get the kill regardless. And then on the engage here from Owner, he can't quite get the kill on the JJ, who gets off his Gore Drinker proc there to heal himself. And Sejuani gets trapped under the turret with the extra slow, even with the heals from Soraka going through. And now we've been, reset the map. The siege stalled for now. EDG fighting just to get out of their base, fighting for a bit of control, but there's a ward behind them already. Now the TP flank threat is not massive in most circumstances, but with this GP so fed, it is still a concern. You can see the death brush already set up. They might not have a Heimerdinger, but they know how to wait in the fog of war. Both sides waiting for the face check. It's gonna make it happen. And you can see, it could just be one final 5v5. Autos have to come out to stop the barrel. They can't afford to let it proc. Tension palpable. Gonna try and push out mid here. EDG make a rush on the wave, but T1 gonna get early priority towards this ocean soul. Dragon has arrived. They have rent oh. also. They can burn it down. EDG have got to go now. It should be impossible to steal if they get the full setup. JJ now moving over the wall into the pit, but it's still 6.5k health on the objective. EDG zoned away. They're waiting for the cannon barrage to expire. Big ulti coming off to the side from Viper, but he doesn't have the damage to back it up. Who can get the Drake in the end? It's the red. It's the ocean soul for T1. This has to be it. EDG have to take this fight or the game will fall apart. They start off with a good exchange. Already the Sejuani gone, they is firing back one in response. The Callista now flashing forward, Guma, fearless, leaping into the face of EDG. Viper running from the hills, T1, domination. They get the soul, they'll take the game. They're TPing just for a bit of a fun. There's nowhere for Viper to go. Zoned out, Gale forcing away, but he will be cut down. They will take their time, but T1 in group stages are an inevitability. Faker has never gone out second, and he is not looking to start today. T1 will take their time finishing this, but they will exit their group five and one. They will push EDG to the second seed. They will outlive Fnatic and Cloud9 and look ahead to the challenges in front of them in the quarterfinals. EDG, perhaps one last desperate stand. T1 ready for one more fight to seal the deal. Zeus legendary. Scout off to the side, gets a massive shutdown, but it is too little. It is too late. They will run, but Guma knows what he wants, and it's the win more than the champions in the fountain. T1 leaving his first seed. Huge stuff here for T1 moving through the tournament, exiting as first seed yet again for Faker. Their bottom lane was massive. Pushing here early on with the Callista Soraka, but Caria coming up with the silences on the engage. Stuffing EDG's hopes. And Zeus on that gangplank. My goodness, they let the Maokai through and they chop it right down. And you love to see it because that's the kind of innovation you expect as we get to best of fives. How many more of the tournament power picks have a counter ready and waiting for them in the arms of some of these teams? This Lissandra could not do anything. You're looking across the board. Top is a gangplank, can't do anything there. Yep. Mid lane, Faker, his support rushed to Mikhail. So carry a first item Mikhail's, you can't go for him either. The Soraka silence on the ground on these engages made the game so difficult for Scout to play.
And I feel like we have to give credit specifically to Karia and Zeus. And Karia, so much of it, the Soraka pick. He obviously played it exceptionally. He built exceptionally. And Zeus, individually, built that massive lead. Suffered under the attention of three members on the top side. He's committing a lot to try and shut him down. But he was, in this game, an inevitability. He just took over in the fight, landing so many barrels, taking out so many threats. Everybody has some part of them that is a Faker fan. Yeah, I think just everybody.